Centre back. Long pass again. Is that Jovetic? Straight to Ben Yedder. Nice. On the volley. eBay. Voland. Great striker as well, Voland. What's he going to do with it? Jovetic. Nice, Henry. Lovely pass. Lovely goal. Nice movement. Right. Fabregas. Fabregas, the legend. Straight away, straight to his head. Goal. That Maripan. Henrique. With the top to Volland. Nice flick onto Yedda. Awesome goal. All right, then Tadic playing on that left-hand side. Straight up the top to Traore. What's he going to do with it? Swinging it in. Swinging it in. There we go. Straight to Nerez. Nice. Oh, long, three, long free kick now. Straight over the top to Schur's head. No. All right, back to Klaassen then. What's he going to do? Oh, nice. Straight back to Schur's. Nice header. Free kick, Tadic, the main man Tadic, straight to Martinez. Nice goal off the bar as well. Right then, Graven Birch, blind. Klaassen, on the right hand side now, swinging it in. Idrissi, oh, he got there before the goalkeeper. What's up guys, Tucker Jobs and this is Tactic Testing. So you've seen the highlights. This is LS Plays FM's 4-3-3 full back attack tactic. You can find it on a FM Scout. Obviously the link will be in the description so you can download the tactic. The uh, teams on this test, obviously no English teams this time. It's a uh, bit of a foreign league uh, test. Uh, Monaco, Dijon, Ajax, FC20 and then just one English team. But it's in the lower leagues of the uh, English tiers, obviously Tramia in league two so yeah nice uh, small team there but we'll just glance over them just to make sure the tactic does half decent in those leagues i can't promise that it would do great on all your teams that you decide to pick but i'm just uh, testing it with this uh this selection of teams here so um yeah it's a pretty decent shape obviously it's a shape that i used to use years ago and i'm guessing the fullback attack is the reason that these fullbacks are on attack and um, then that's our main focal point of the tactic maybe that might be his design uh, so let's go through the instructions then for the guys that can't download advanced forward inverted winger left inside forward right box to box midfielder advanced playmaker anchorman ball back left ball back right ball playing defender left ball playing defender right and sweeper keeper so there's no instructions there's no instructions which leave so much um, room for tweaks, basically. It's um, it's good because sometimes when there's no instructions and the tactic does half decent, sometimes it, it cannot do so well. But that's where you then come into it um, and fit the tactic to your team by using the instructions. Yes, you've got an inside forward who hasn't got any instructions. But if you've got certain players that will fit a certain criteria, um, obviously if they're more attacking, get further forward. If you plan on utilising your striker a little bit better or the box-to-box -box midfielder getting forward, then hold up the ball. Um, use that player to obviously stay in position, wait for the other players to run forward uh, and do it that way. And then obviously you can shoot more often if he's got better attacking capabilities and attributes and, and so on and so forth. So it leaves so much tweaking, so much to be desired. <laughs> with your creativity if you decide to download this tactic um so let's get on then with the set piece instructions corners defending right and left and attacking left and right and as you can see i think it's the first time actually i've seen a uh, corner taker with the instructions of aiming for the far post nice um then we go to the free kick instructions defending right and left and attacking left and right with mixed uh corner uh, free kick taken Small chance of shot, right and left, and that is also mixed. And then indirect wide, left and right, mixed again. And then deep, right and left, mixed once more. Uh, throwing instructions, defending right, left, and attacking left and right. And the, and the uh, throwing again is mixed. And then so that's the set pieces and individuals. It's an attacking mentality tactic. In possession, you're looking at standard attack and width with passing to space on the approach play. Um, passing to space, maybe if you're a, a little bit of a lower team, you could take that option off because uh, you might not have the players to obviously utilize that as best as possible. Um, and then overlapping left and right with play out defense, slightly more direct passing direct directness with a much higher tempo. Mixed crosses and final third with run at defense as well. In transition, counter press and counter, and your goalkeeper's instructions are to distribute quickly uh, to the full backs and take short kicks. And then out of possession, a higher line of engagement with a standard defensive line. Uh, defensive width is force opposition outside. 
Prevent short goalkeeper distribution with extremely urgent press and intensity and the get stuck in instruction is on. Uh, so yeah, that's the tactic. That's the teams. Obviously, if you want a, an idea of what players to use in this system, just pick best 11 here and it will give you a rough um, look. Obviously, not counting the players that are out on loan, so you'll be switching them. But yeah, rough look and then you just put in your personal preferences then of what you think might work a little bit better to go along with those instructions that you may or may not put in. It's up to you. Don't forget, guys, tactic testing is all about showing you a tactic and then it's up to you to maybe make it better, right? to utilize it to your team the best it can be, uh, to change it a little bit and let everyone know in the comments of what you did and how you think it could go better and also go on the Discord. Obviously, the Discord's there so we can all talk about the tactics, we can talk about players, we can talk about the Football Manager game in general, uh, what things that you can do, what you're doing at the minute, what you're creating at the minute, posting your own tactics on there and hopefully one day they'll get a video off me as well um, for everyone else to download and watch and enjoy. So, um, yeah, that's the tactic. Let's get on to the end of the season and see how everyone does. So then let's start in the Eredivisie uh, with the Ajax and FC20. So Ajax are always going to be predicted to win the league. They are so good compared to everyone else in that league. They are predicted first and came first. They did. They only lost one game. 87 points, so 12 points above second place. FC20 though, well done to them. End of the day, they are predicted 17th. That's relegation. They're a relegation team, drop dead underdogs um, in fifth place. So nice one uh, for that. And also getting a couple of players in the top threes as well for both teams. So uh, let's have a look at the goals. Only an FC20 got, uh, striker got there with 32 goals. And that was Pereira or Pereira da Silva. Um, the striker for FC20, not even the Ajax striker got in uh, the top three. So nice one for uh, FC20. Average rating. Um, is that Tagliafico? Yeah, Tagliafico and Promes, both from Ajax, first and second. Assists, you've got Tagliafico and Tadic, second and third. And then player of the matches belongs to uh, Pereira da Silva, once again, Tagliafico. But Ajax are uh, getting eight and seven player of the matches. And then um, Ste Stecklenburg. Uh, got the goalkeepers clean sheets top spot with 19 there so nice one for both teams for getting some uh, both players in the top threes there let's have a look at Ajax competitions and so in the Champions Cup they got knocked out in the first round against Benfica which is a shame but sometimes you think Ajax out of all the teams that are going to get to the latter stages of the Champions League they're probably one of the weakest um, and then the Dutch Cup unfortunately actually lost out to Feyenoord lost 1-0 in extra time that's shocking actually I would, I would have thought that Ajax would have walked that competition so uh, schedule then some results uh, head to heads first then against uh, FC20 how did they do so the first time they played uh, Ajax won 1-0 and the second time they played it was a one all draw the only loss of the season in the league for Ajax came to Feyenoord uh, they lost 2-0 in, uh, in February so yeah only one loss it's still pretty good I know they're a top team some people say obviously they're so overpowered they shouldn't lose any but just in general on a test basis only losing one game is good um, so some big results here all right seven nil there the test four two three one uh four five nil how did they do in the Champions Cup then against uh, Benfica? They drew and then drew again but then it was the away goals unfortunately uh so yeah some decent results Nice, nice one for Ajax there. Uh, let's have a look at the squad. How did the squad do with the tactic? Half decent. Half decent, to be fair. Decent average ratings. Best player being Tagliafico. Uh, two goals and 15 assists. Nice one. Uh, biggest goal scorers, Haller, Neres, Promes, Tadic. All getting double digits with Haller or Haller. Um, getting 24 goals. And then biggest creators in your team was Tagliafico, Tadic and Klaassen. Uh, 13, 14, 15. And so on, going lower. Team report then on a whole, pretty much expected to get that. Domination, that is. That's complete domination on all the averages. Well done there. Then a team report. Scoring, attacking efficiency, aggressive and clinical. Conceding, we are quiet and impenetrable, which is exactly where you want to be. The full stats then, 113 goals. Not as much as I was expecting. A walk in the park, really, for Ajax this league. Uh, but goals conceded was 29 in all competitions. Now, that is low. Uh, in the league, it was 19 goals conceded. That's nothing. That is absolutely nothing, considering uh, you played 34 games. So, awesome there for uh, Ajax. Nice one. Next team up, then, were the, uh, were the underdogs, FC20. So, coming fifth, not bad. 
not bad at all. Uh, competitions then, so in the uh, Dutch Cup, they got all the way to the semi-final, unfortunately, and got knocked out by Feyenoord. And then in the schedules, let's have a look, some uh, big results and 5-3. Nice one there. 6 0 against HFC in the Dutch Cup first round. They're probably a small team, I know that. Uh, so everything else looks pretty standard, to be fair. There's a decent finish to the end of the season, really. The last two months 5 1, 4 0, 3 0, 6 1. Um, yeah, the capabilities are there. Uh, they, they definitely took the results that they needed and they finished in a high position. A squad. Not as many, but still half decent for the underdogs to get some decent uh, average ratings there. Because uh, every now and again, I've done average ratings before on the underdogs, and you might only get three players getting uh, above seven. Uh, best player was Abu Abuhi. Is that Abuhi? Um, three and five. Biggest goal scorer was Perel with 35 goals. That's not bad, is it? Uh, biggest creators is just, uh, is that Illich? Or Lich? Uh, and Bosch, uh, 10 and 10 apiece. Obviously, everyone else getting lower than double digits. Team report then, St again, not bad. You're actually, I'm expecting that, and that's probably the best case scenario for an underdog. You're still massively overpowered on the goals per game, shots per game. Conceded per game is going to be lower than the top dogs, Ajax, um, but you are still above the averages on everyone else in the league. So that's uh, very good indeed. Uh, analyst report, scoring. Aggressive and clinical, and then conceding, we are here. We're quiet and leaky. It's acceptable for who you are, um, but it's still a good place, really. You're not getting a lot of shots against you, to be fair. You're getting about just under nine on the averages, uh, but it is they are going in. And with the team like FC20 and the quality that you are and where you're predicted by the media, um, you probably haven't got the quality to just eat those goals um, a bit less. <laughs> <laughs> coming into quiet and impenetrable um, so the full numbers was 88 goals and 48 conceded so at least you didn't concede more than you scored and in the league it was 79 goals scored which was still the second best and then 45 conceded which was the ninth best there so uh awesome let's go to france then with the uh, monaco and dijon how have they done Ooh, surprising. Surprising indeed. So Monaco are predicted sixth. So it's still a big improvement that they managed to get third. They qualified for European Champions League for next season. Well, it's Dijon that are the surprise team. Dijon are the underdogs. They're predicted 18th. That's relegation. That's here in the red zone. Da -da. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, yeah, so second place. Seven points beyond PSG. That's probably the best that they can ever expect, Dijon. Uh, it, would, it would have to be a really bad season for PSG for Dijon to overtake them and uh, come first. So you can't moan at that, can you, for Dijon? That's awesome. Um, if, if this tactic is consistent, then maybe it's one for Dijon and it, and it works really well. Uh, top three players then, Ben Yedda, obviously getting 29 goals, coming first on the goals. Um, assists was Fabregas and... Oh, how do you say that name then? Sure? Sure? Yeah. Not going to go there. Not going to go there. I'll give myself an headache. Uh, then Ben Yedda and Asale uh, coming second and third with player of the matches. And uh, is that Rassiopi? Uh, coming second for Dijon on goals or a clean sheet. So nice one actually for the underdog getting clean sheets. Coming second, 16 there. Probably saying that name wrong. I'm dreadful. I am dreadful. Why? Why do I do it? <laughs> Let's have a look at Monaco's competitions then. They're the runners up of the French Cup, obviously going out to PSG in the final 3 2. So that's a shame. Um, but Ben Yedda was the highest scorer in that competition. Schedule head to heads against Dijon then. How did we do first? So the first time they played, Monaco won 4 1. Second time they played, it was actually Dijon that won 2 0. So a nice one there. Now some big results against some big teams. How have we done? So we lost out to PSG uh, the last time and the first time we played them at the start of the season and lost again 4 1. But everyone else got some pretty decent results against. So uh, 4 0, St. Etienne, nice. Um, some other big teams, who would you say? OM. Uh, Marseille, Lyon, 3-1, decent result against Lyon there, uh, again against Marseille, you drew there, Nice, 4-2, so yeah, you probably just upset yourself really by not getting the results against the smaller teams, and that's obviously what's let Monaco down unfortunately, squad then, 
Average rating, again, quite a few players getting above sevens. Uh, best player was Ben Yedder, 37 goals, 5 assists. Biggest goal scorers after Ben Yedder was Volland with 9, so that's a big difference. You are ex With this tactic, your striker is your main goal scoring threat. So um, unless you've got an awesome free kick taker, then maybe he might bang in a few as well. But 37 goals for the striker. And then uh, assists, Fabregas, the man, the myth. <laughs> 17 assists for him everyone else uh, getting um, below double digits so yeah nice one team report on a whole so he's still doing fairly well when it comes to the general averages you're not doing too bad it's a little bit lower on the goals per game for the teams that you are really for monica i was expecting that to at least go into the twos uh, just a bit higher um, but still decent nonetheless analyst report scoring aggressive and clinical and then oh look all right psg without a tactic Getting put on, they're aggressive and wasteful. <laughs> uh, conceding, uh, we are quiet and leaky. Full numbers for Monaco is 87 goals scored. See, that is pretty low. That's maybe um, you might want to start. What would you do to that tactic to get more goals? Maybe transfer this inside forward to attack, uh, get a more forward. And then you've got an attacking playmaker. And uh, Mozilla, maybe switch out the Mozilla for the box to box because you have got the anchor man there protecting. Mmm, mmm. It's up to you guys. All right, I'll just show you the base tactic for the tactic test, and uh, you can let us know how you uh, got on with uh, some of the changes that you may have made. So, uh, yeah, in the league, it was 72 goals scored, which is the third best, and 43 conceded, which was the fifth best there. So, the underdogs, Dijon, well. Yeah, what can you say? Second place. Champions League next season. Massive boost to reputation and money. Nice one. Competitions. Uh, they went out in the quarterfinal, unfortunately. And the French Cup got knocked out by PSG. And then if we have a look at the schedules then. So they must have done well. They finished in a great position. Everyone is considered pretty much a bigger team to them. So uh, yeah, beating Marseille there. 3-0, uh, getting a draw against PSG. 1-0, FC Lorient 5-2. Nice. Nice results. All around, obviously, you lost against PSG in the cup there. And then near the end of the season, PSG again, you beat them 1-0. So to any team in this league to beat PSG is a massive boon. Uh, so 1-0 is a fantastic result. And then obviously some other results here. Leon, look, 4-0 win there. Nice one squad. How did the squad do? couple of players again, but you're expected now for the underdogs to get less than the uh, top dogs when it comes to average ratings. Best player was Bowie, but he only played one game. So let's count. That guy, I'm just going to say Munia, uh, 14 goals and 12 assists. Biggest goal scorers was uh, Saleh Kamara, 19-16, obviously coming down here to 14 there. Biggest creators was uh, Munia, again, getting 12 assists. And then team report, see, that's half decent. That is not bad, really. For, for Dijon, you did very well. Conceding per game is massive, massive. It's just worked out so well, the fact that you've, conceded less than one so awesome job uh, Dijon uh, numbers then scoring attack and efficiency aggressive and clinical and then conceding we are here quiet and impenetrable guys for an underdog team insane insane uh, stats 80 goals scored and only 32 conceded uh, in the league that was 75 goals scored so you're the second best and then in the uh, league as well 29 goals uh, conceded that is that is insane. That's amazing for an underdog to only concede 29 goals in the league, especially in the French league as well. It was not that bad when it comes to quality. Yeah, and I think in my own opinion, it's not as good as the Premier League when it comes to varied teams being able to get different results. Uh, but 29 is, is, is really good. Really good. Um, so nice one to Dijon. And then quick look at Tramia in uh, League 2. They got promoted. They came third. They were predicted fifth. So it's a little bit of a jump up. They were a half-decent team already. So they still got promoted. Uh, but unfortunately, didn't get any players in the top threes apart from yellow cards. So guys, that was the LS Plays FM 433 fullback attack tactic hopefully it works out for you let us know if it does let us know how it gets on in england because obviously the test wasn't uh, done in england in the high divisions premier league championship so hopefully it works out just fine just as good as the uh, tests have done and um yeah if you make any changes let us know in the comments obviously or join the discord let us know in the discord as well obviously you can chat to everyone who loves football manager who likes doing tactics chat to myself as well because i'm always on there and uh, hope, hopefully you uh, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any more content. Obviously, I do other videos as well, Wonder Kids, Guides. Um, and yeah, 
So enjoy your save, everyone. This is the uh, LS Plays FM tactic. I'm Tucker Jobs. See you later. Bye.